Hi, I'm Todd Wood. I am president of Core Academy of Science. I'm a young age creationist, and I love hominin fossils. And this is Fossil Focus. All right, well, today for our Fossil Focus, we have something, I don't know, I think it's pretty extra special. Um, this particular model here uh, is a model of the famous fossil known as Peking Man. Now I'm gonna, let me tell you the story of this thing before we get into exactly what it is and so forth. Um, these fossils were uh, recovered from a site called Dragon Bone Hill. It's about 30 miles southeast of central Beijing, China. Uh, the town and the, the site uh, are known as Jokurian. And uh, yeah, so the first fossils there were discovered in uh, 1926, the year after the Scopes trial here in the United States. Uh, they were just a few teeth, and they were excavated by some European uh, paleontologists who took them to Sweden, actually, where three of the teeth from the original excavations are still located. Um, they were recognized to be hominins, and... Uh, Davidson Black, who worked at the Peking Union Medical College in Beijing, uh, went around and got funding to open an excavation. And they uh, excavated for the next, goodness, 15 years or so, and unearthed about 200 uh, fossil fragments of hominins from this cave in uh, China. And the, the fossils were, well, most of them numerically were teeth. There were jaw fragments and skull fragments. There were uh, long bone pieces as well. Uh, so this was a pretty rich fossil site. Uh, during the excavations, they also found um, stone tools, uh, and what they interpreted to be evidences of fire in the cave. So the original excavators, Davidson Black and his crew, they interpreted this as a site where these uh, people had been living uh, and, uh, and thus accounting for the, 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 the hearths, the, the, the fire evidence, and the stone tools, and the, the random bones that had been found in the cave. Now, what you may know, and this is probably what most people know about Peking Man, if they know anything, um, in 1941, at the outbreak of um, what we think of as World War II, when the Japanese invaded mainland China, uh, the Japanese were basically looking to loop things, and the scientists involved in this, by this time, uh, Dr. Black had passed away, and his replacement, Franz Weidenreich, was uh, in charge of the excavations. Um, they began to make arrangements to hide the fossils and move them, ultimately move them out of the country. Uh, China was very proud of their fossils. In 1928, just after the original discoveries had been made, uh, the Chinese government cracked down on the removal of fossils from their borders. And so all of those, all of those amazing fossils uh, were still kept there at Peking Union Medical College. So, so they needed to hide them from the Japanese and get them out of the country. So the idea was that they would be packaged up, uh, crated up, and transported uh, to New York City to the American Museum of Natural History in New York City, where they would then be uh, kept presumably until after the war. Uh, and so the last time anyone saw these fossils, they were being created up by American servicemen to be transported to an American warship uh, where they were going to be moved. And that's it. What happened to them next, we don't know. There's lots of rumors. There's stories that the Japanese did intercept them and, and they are now in Japan. There are stories that they were buried somewhere. There are persistent stories that they've been buried uh, just to hide them from the Japanese. There are stories that 
um, people in the United States, some of the American servicemen who were uh, in charge of of moving these fossils had had taken them to the U.S. somehow. Um, but they've never turned up. So the rumors go on, and and no one really knows. Eventually, maybe they will they will show up again, but we don't know. Um, so what we have here, the artifacts from the original excavations. What do we have left of this? Uh, so there is a set of first generation original casts of the fossils that are now in the American Museum. When Franz Weidenreich uh, evacuated himself from uh, China, he made his way to the American Museum in New York City and he brought with him a complete set of original casts of the fossils. So we do have, we are able to make measurements and we're able to study the original fossils. The other thing that survives from the original excavations, besides the photographs and the measurements and the publications that all came out of it, uh, the, ne- the other thing that survives are sculptures of reconstructed female skulls, which is what this is right here. And yes, this is an original uh, sculpture that came from those excavations. So we can tell that this is a real original um, fossil. We can look underneath the, the cranium here and we can see the original markings. This one, this replica is actually number 587. It's, uh, it's marked, presumably signed by Lucille Swan, who was the sculptor, uh, but it's also marked uh, with Dr. Weidenreich's name there as well. And it's given this name, Sinanthropus pecanensis. Uh, which is basically Chinese man of Peking, right? So that would be the original name for these fossils. Uh, These, obviously, since we have number 587 in the series, there were hundreds of these things made, so they're not rare. Uh, There used to be some of these, uh, a pair of these on display at the American Museum. I'm not sure if they're still on display there. Um, but they used to be on display there. Uh, and so this particular uh, piece came into the Core Academy collection about, about 18 months ago. We were pretty delighted to be able to acquire it. Um, and it is, yeah, it is one of, the, one of the few artifacts that survive from, of the, of the actual fossils themselves. Now, of course, it's a reconstruction, but it's, it was built and made by people who were able to study the original fossils and had the original fossils uh, in their possession at the time they made it. So it's a pretty good reconstruction. There have been other reconstructions made in the present that are a little, people would argue they're a little better. That's fine. Um, But this is still a pretty great, pretty great reconstruction. And it's quite fragile. It's made of, not quite sure what it is, plaster or ceramic, something quite fragile, and I'm not going to lift it up anymore because of that. yeah, so what are these things? So excavations at, at the site continued after, uh, after, the, after the war, uh, and uh, a few more fossils have been found, um, but nothing uh, rivaling the original excavations with the 200 or so fossils that, it, that were discovered then. So what do we have here? Well, today it's not classified as Sinanthropus pecanensis. It is classified instead as Homo erectus. Uh, So it it goes into the same category as Java man, for example, um, which was was found years earlier uh, in Indonesia. Um, It has a very typical sort of Homo erectus shape to it, very thick, thick brow ridge here, a very low forehead, very sloped head, Back here is a bulging part on the uh, occipital bone called the nuchal torus. Um, yeah, so this is all very typical. It has a sloped uh, uh, mandible here, so there's no chin projecting like in modern Homo sapiens. Uh, the the cave itself was completely excavated. It was. It's been described as one of the most thorough excavations in in paleontology, all of the material 
from the cave that was loose was removed. So there is currently ongoing discussion about exactly what sort of deposits these were. So some scientists uh, argue against the original interpretation that this was a this was a uh, an occupation site. They argue that instead this was uh, a den of hyenas, um, and so they look at some of the bones and find hyena teeth marks on them. And so they argue that this is actually not not a place where people lived. How do you explain the fire? Some would argue that it was blown in from ash outside of the cave. Others have argued that it is chemical degradation and not actually ash at all. Uh, So there's disputes on exactly what kind of evidence of, you know, what sort of a deposit and environment this was that these fossils were found in, which is fine. Um, It just highlights, you know, we don't know everything about fossils that are discovered. No surprises there. Uh, Yeah, so Homo erectus, uh, the conventional age of these things is thought to be somewhere around half a million years, thought to be less than a million years. Um, In my creationist perspective, I would place these as post-flood survivors. These are colonists from uh, the Tower of Babel, probably, Um, and they're human. Uh, so the stone tool evidence, I think, uh, that's associated with these things would imply that these guys are, are human. And I would affirm that my own statistical analysis of these fossils indicates that they are human and there, you know, the evidence of fire use here is ambiguous, but there is other evidence of fire use for these, for these sorts of people in other places. So I have no doubt I have no doubt that they were capable of using fire. So, yeah, it's a pretty spectacular fossil. I'm pretty excited to have this in our collection here. So thank you to our donors who made that possible. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.